Hello, I'm Mike Willisey. Welcome to This Is Your Life. This is the voice of June Bronhill singing Velia, the song which took her from Broken Hill to the opera stages of the world. Now, June Bronhill is coming to this studio tonight, believing she's to be interviewed by newsman Mike Peterson about her appearances at the Opera House. I would like everyone in the audience to be as quiet as you possibly can because you're going to be part of the surprise. And I want you to watch as Mike Peterson sets up this interview situation. And then I have um, uh, my opening night of Merry Widow on the Friday night. Oh, so you haven't, you've hardly got time to stop I've and take a breath at all. Just before we get underway with mm. the business side of the news interview, have you met Mike Willisey? Have I met you? I don't think so, June, but I'm delighted to meet you. Hello, Mike. And June, I have a surprise for you. Why? Because tonight, June Bronhill, this is your life. Could be good. <laughs> I think you were a little surprised. I don't think I was surprised. I think I was shattered. I couldn't believe it. Well, June, we're going to review a lot of important episodes in your life and a lot of important people in your life tonight, and we thought that you might like to share these moments with a young lady from New Zealand, Biddy, Carol and Jane, who's flown especially from New Zealand to share this with you. I was there. Oh. Well, in fact, June, we were planning this secretly with Biddy. I can't believe it. While you were in New Zealand. Was it very hard to keep that secret, Biddy? It's very hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you devil! <laughs> I think you should both sit down. Oh, I yes. Think... yes. And you see, if I'd know, you see, there, she's matching perfectly. <laughs> she's got beautiful green, and I'm in shocking blue. <laughs> so All right, June. Oh. The story of June Brunhill starts as you were born June Goff in the mining town of Broken Hill in New South Wales. It's a town famous for its unions, its pubs, its toughness. And you live in a quiet back street, the youngest in a typical Australian family. And here's the family, sure. your brother John Goff from Broken Hill and with him from Adelaide and Melbourne, your sisters Mari and Pat here? and cousin Moira. They're all here. <laughs> Fine like that. Right. And June, in the audience, we have Aunt Vera and other members of the I family with you, you as well. Yes. I didn't even see you there, did I? All right. Oh, I'll see them all. I'll see them all. Oh, I honestly. Oh, you wait, Jeffrey Bell. Mm. First so, question to Mary. Just sit. First yeah. question to Mary. Yeah. Now, this is going to be interesting. Mary, <laughs> what do you remember about the childhood? Well, what about our lovely picnics out of Penrose Park? Oh, yes. We never with Mum and Dad. What about the camel rides? The camel rides? Yes, don't you remember? Well, I, I, I don't really remember them. But did I ever get, get up on one? Yes, of course did you I? Did, yes. I don't know how I managed it. I can't even get on a horse. <laughs> they don't a camel. Well, they Pat, get what, down. What were your memories, Pat? <laughs> oh, Sundays. They were good oh, days. Sundays were marvellous days. Lovely. I love the Sundays. Table tennis. Yes. Sing songs Chinese around the piano. And yes. Sing songs. Uh, they were fabulous days. Dad used to play the piano. Yes. And the neighbours around the place and the block would come in every Sunday night and we'd have a terrific uh, sing-along with the uh, crowd. Uh, I think your fathers used to give you threepence each to go and spend. Do you remember what you did with that? 
red lolly balls to paint our lips. <laughs> <laughs> red lolly balls. We used, to, we used to lick them and paint our lips and do all that bit. <laughs> and we used to traipse across Broken Hill every Sunday. One Sunday, Moisey would come over to me. The other Sunday, I'd go over to Moisey. And we'd trundle along with our prams and our dolls. And we'd stop off at the shop with our, with our sixpence, three for me and three for Moisey. And we'd buy our lollies and we'd arrive there about half an hour later. We'd just play mothers and fathers. And, oh. <laughs> well, the family. Thank you, Brian Hill. It's been great to have you take part in This Is Your Life tonight. Thanks for joining Thank us. You. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> this is ridiculous. Would you like to sit down? Yes, I'd love to sit down before I call. We've got a lot of... Oh, look at me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't bear all this. Fortunately, as you're growing up, there's a lot of music because you weren't too keen on sport. And you were part of the choir at Broken Hill High School. Yes. We had a wonderful music teacher, Marjorie Earnshaw, and we were so good, we won the New South Wales competition twice. That's your high school friend who still lives in Broken Hill, Josie Bock. Now Josie Mrs. Peter Rain. Josie, you and June used to spend quite a bit of time together. Yes, we often used to sort of practice around the piano and my mother's neighbours used to sort of hang over the front fence and listen. <laughs> and um, only just recently, Ailson and Harold Mew returned from England where they'd paid £5 a ticket to hear you sing. And uh, when they came back, they said, hasn't it gone a long way since Marker Street? Oh. And it was where we used oh, to have, we would be able to hear it for free. You know? We used to have the most marvellous times oh. at her place. Yes. Can't tell you. We used to all go swimming together and... Oh, we just had so much fun. Gang of us were all together, and, and we had lots of friends who played piano. One, uh, Brian Sarah Sorry. played piano. Old Bamba played guitar, and, and what's his name on the sax? Bob oh, Chambers Bobby Chalmers on the sax. Oh, we had so much fun. And we're going to have some more tonight. Jesse right. Rayner, thanks okay. very much for joining us. <laughs> Should your family move away from Broken Hill before you get your leaving certificate? The problem now is how you can finish your schooling, so you apply for a scholarship. To get the scholarship, she declared that she wanted to be an architect. And that's the voice of a man who really knows you, June, your yes. high school teacher who happened to marry your older sister, Barbara. Yeah, Sam Copeland. Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Sam how are you? How are you? You're in such a difference. Where's Barb? Where's Barb? Is she coming uh, Can I pull? Yes, I well, where's I think... Barbara? Where's Barbara? Oh, I'll see her in a minute. Yeah, I see she, you, I can see her, yes. Mm. Now, Sam, did yeah. June really want to be an architect? Uh, <laughs> frankly, I don't think so, no. <laughs> I think that uh, June has an abiding interest in the Opera House, but for reasons other than just architectural. That's the closest we get to the architect. I think so, yes. And then, of course, I mean, she's always wanted to get married and... Uh, Go on seeing. That's got nothing to do with architecture. Uh, I don't know. You do a lot of fiddling. <laughs> Sam Copel, thanks for joining us. That's great. Very good. Thank you, Sam. I'm up and down like a yo-yo, aren't I? Now, who have you got for me? Well... There she is. Oh, dear, wasn't I lovely? <laughs> Singing was what she wanted to do more than anything else in 1948. You come to Sydney... Barbara and Sam are living in Sydney, so you stay with them and you're earning your living as a typist. In the year 1949, you try for the Sydney Estedford. We remember the Estedford of that year in particular because of the fighting spirit of the young country competitor, June Goff. The head of the Sydney Estedford, John Cluxton. John, what happened at that Stanford? The adjudicator stopped June because she wasn't singing her aria in the original key, That's which right. all the contestants must do. June were asked to come back and sing it in the original key. Being in the conservatorium, she was able to race round and get an original score. She returned, and these are the adjudicator's remarks on that occasion. Excellent. Very well controlled, but I still prefer Rossini's original notes. 
<laughs> June went on to reach the finals, and she came third that year to Joan Sutherland. John Clarkson, thanks very much for being with us tonight. John, thank you. Well, that was a remarkable feat, June, for a girl who had such little formal training. And you look for a teacher. This unassuming little country girl came to me for an audition, and I knew right away that she had the potentials, I mean, quality of voice, natural musicality, and already a great personality. A lady who taught you the art and discipline of singing, who opened the world of opera, opera to you, Madame Marianne Marty. She's still there. <laughs> This wonderful, wonderful lady still teaches me all the time, and without her, I don't know what I would do musically. All right, I'll sit down and you sit here. There you look lovely. Thank you. So do you. Now, Madam, I see you shaped and moulded this young singer. Yes, I did. We worked very hard together. Very hard. <laughs> we still do. And. She was so cooperative and never inhibited. So after one year, I thought she was ready to win the scenario. And I was right. You were right. <laughs> June, this is the year 1950, just That's 25 right. years ago. Madame Marty, I believe, uh, June studied with you for another year. Yes. And sang at the National Opera. That's correct. When you thought she was ready to go abroad, you also thought she was ready for a change of name. Yes, I thought that Gough was not good popular sounds for a singer. And so I, I doodled around. We didn't find anything right, really. <laughs> and one night I rang her up and I said, uh, where are, have you been born? And she said, in Broken Hill. And I said, wait a moment, Broken Hill? Bron Hill, and I got it. That was it, that's how it became Bron Hill. June, your next step then is to go abroad to study, yes. but you have no money. Where is it to come from? Well, that's where the legend of June Bronhill from Broken Hill begins, and we'll find out about that in just a few moments. June, you win the Sydney of Stedford and the Sun Aria Prize is yours, but it doesn't give you enough money to go abroad to study. You need money for the boat trip and for the tuition in London. And the answer to your problem is to come from Broken Hill, and here is the man who spearheaded the fundraising committee to help you get to London, Bill Welsh. <laughs> Bill, how did it happen? Well, you stand back here and we can, we can talk to June too. Come right here. I'll, sta I'll stand here and you stand there. That's and it. there's the camera. I hope it was a lot easier raising those funds in Broken Hill. Well, I was rather vocal. But my wife, she said, well now, Billy, you've talked a lot. Now act and act quickly. So you had the public meeting? We had a public meeting at our Broken Hill town hall. Very enthusiastic indeed. And also, the mining company was going to match you pound for pound. As soon as we made up our mind, the public was most responsive, and almost immediately, the Zinc Corporation made it known that they would back any money raised on behalf of pound you for pound. would be matched pound for pound. <laughs> what did you get, Bill? Well, in no time, we had a thousand pounds, but a bolt from the blue, Cuba had stepped. Cupid, mind you. 
And that was the stumbling block. I got the Zinc married. Corporation. <laughs> they rang almost immediately and cancelled their pound for pound subsidy. But, but you still had the thousand pounds? Yes, we had more than a thousand. And they raised 1500 enough. for me, actually, and they did the most incredible things. They did penny drives throughout the town, That's and right. people would just come and put a penny down, and there were just miles and miles and miles of pennies every day. And the most marvellous thing was nobody ever came and pinched one. <laughs> they just kept adding to them, and they were wonderful, well, wonderful you, people. Before you went to London, you went back to Broken Hill and thanked them with the memorial concert, didn't mm. you? That's right. Very fine. In 1950, blum, 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 one, I think it was, wasn't it? And we i now like to thank Bill Welch for what he did then and for appearing yes. with us tonight. Yes, thank you Thanks very much. Thank you. has been a great teacher, Dino Borgioli, whom you wanted so much to study with, takes you as a student. In two years, he feels you are ready to audition for the Saddler's Wells Opera Company, and you're accepted. Then comes the night of March 14, 1954. That was the night of June's first major operatic performance. It was the role of Adele in Die Fledermaus. The man who sang with you in that opera, your friend John Farson. Now, John, what did the critics say about that performance? Well, uh, I saw you on the monitor earlier tonight, uh, June. You were absolutely shocked, but June strode onto that opening night in, for her first London performance without a tremor. We were all trembling for her, <laughs> but she just took London by storm. It was a marvellous night. And the critics were kind? Oh, more than kind. You know, it started you right off on your, yes. on your way of a success, it's June. Great excitement. Mm. It's a lovely role. Oh, Make your Adele. Day lovely, yes. uh, With Johnny Fast on there next to me as well. It's great. It was super. Yes. Oh, I still can't get over. John Farson. She's still stunned. Thanks for joining so us. Thank you, Mike. See you later. Mike. Oh, I've aged 20 years tonight. <laughs> with all the success, June, your greatest dream has still to be realised, and that's to perform with the Australian Opera Company. You realised this dream in 1967 when you tour for the Australian Elizabethan Trust. Love is a dream. Say not that hope is vain. Say not that cruel fate will redeem. Good friend who appeared with you on that tour, Robert Gard. But I thought Bobby was ill. <laughs> That we're eavesdropping. <laughs> yes. Oh, that was a, that was a sweet nothing which we used to do on stage quite often. Oh, quite often. <laughs> Robert, what well, were singing? Oh. Me? Well, that tune means a lot to me because that was the very first time that I ever sang with yes. June yes. Bond Hill, and I'd known June both in England and in Australia and admired her from afar, but never got the chance to sing with her until I think it was 1966. And we sang that lovely duet from the Count of Luxembourg. Yes. Now, I shall never forget it. Well, let me bring on another fellow performer from that and passenger from that tour, opera star Ron McConaughey. Well, I'm not going to spoil the fun. Oh, wait a minute, I wonder, he didn't let on about that, but I wonder if he would let on about a certain night in the car on that tour. Oh, the car. <clears throat> oh, we had lots of fun. We laughed, we sang, we laughed. What about that night when the car broke? Your beautiful white Jaguar broke down, and we, yes. s we laughed and sang in the rain. In the rain. It was outside pouring Newcastle. Down. Outside, that's right. It pelted down. It was a hysterical It was an incredible life. thing because we, we did this tour of Don Pasquale through New South Wales country. And uh, we had the usual dusty bus that we all sort of jogged along here. But June decided it might be a little bit arduous. It was a long tour. And she brought her white Jaguar, which followed the bus. Serves your right to break So there was Madam <laughs> sipping, <laughs> sipping iced coffee, no doubt, in the white Jaguar. Only a star could do that. <laughs> oh, you got to be joking. <laughs> <laughs> Robert Gard, Ron McConaughey, thank you oh, very much for joining us. Thank you.
June, in 1970 in London, you star in the musical The Dancing Years. One night you collapse on stage. The doctors find that it's a growth so close to the optic nerve that surgery carries a high risk of blindness. What happens when you face this major obstacle to your singing career, we'll learn in a few moments. <laughs> June, after the collapse on stage, you don't say anything to anybody about the growth. You retreat from most of your friends and go to stay with Jules and Audrey Benjamin, the dear friends you met while playing Robert and Elizabeth. You make your way every day from their house in London to Croydon to a hospital where you get cobalt treatment. It's the only hope to save your sight and your life, I think. In five months, however, you find you're on the road to recovery. recovery and the critics say you're singing better than ever. And now, four years later, you return to Australia. How can I sing with you? That bit you sing on your own. If you'd sing some of the other bits where I sing with you, I would. Oh, I like to hug it too. Oh, all right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and June, here's yet another surprise from you, from your world of music, your friend Tommy Tico. This brings back memories of the Dagger concert that we used to do together. So, yes. how about it, June? Once more, will you? What do you mean? Do you want me to sing it? Yes. Why not? Oh, it's lucky I got over that cold, wasn't it? Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. 